She had a terrific, sharp intellect, but also as an extremely sharp wit. And she was very candid in what she would say. A very, very thoughtful person. Um, didn't engage in the most trivial conversations. Uh, you know, she always contributed something thoughtful to a, to a discussion. She always put on a, 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 what was it that she used to say, lipstick and a smile. Um, so she would never go out dishevelled or anything, she always dressed up nicely. You know, she was a very quiet person. Uh, she had a really, really good sense of humour. She was very self-deprecating. She was acutely intelligent. She was calm, she was kind. She was a true old-fashioned English lady. In 1927, the foundation stone of the University College Hull was laid by the Duke of York, Prince Albert. Since then, the institution has gone on to transform so many people's lives for the better, including that of Barbara Cannon Turner. Born on the 16th of October 1921 in West Hull, Barbara was the only daughter of Frank and Annie Turner. Uh, when Barbara was born, she was born with cerebral palsy, which affected her brain and motor coordinations, particularly her hand movements and leg movements and her speech. Apparently she didn't talk until she was four years old. Throughout her life her coordination was affected as was her writing ability. She didn't consider herself to be disabled however and would shrug off any difficulties as clumsiness. Barbara had a happy childhood and was described by her family as enthusiastic and self-reliant. It wasn't a um, disabilitating form of palsy. Because of that, uh, her parents sent her to a private school somewhere in Hull, way up, I don't know. Um, and from then, uh, she began to make rapid progress, as I understand it, and joined sort of mainstream schooling, private schools, and then went on to be educated at Mallet Lambert. Uh, she was a serious contender for Oxford, but didn't get in because uh, for the exams that she had to sit, she had to stand to write the answers to the papers, and no allowance was given for that. So she didn't get sufficiently high grades enough to get a scholarship to Oxford. On the 22nd of August 1939, on the eve of the Second World War, Barbara received confirmation that she had not gained the distinction she needed to be accepted. Oxford's loss, however, became Hull's gain, as Barbara, begrudgingly at first, enrolled to study English literature at her local university. Despite her initial apprehension of attending a university other than Oxford, Barbara thrived at the University of Hull in her chosen field of English. And what did she get up to at the university? I know from uh, the snippets that she said that she enjoyed being involved in any social activities there and indeed she was a very stylish lady, very elegant lady and so no doubt if there are any balls or anything that was uh, a special event she would be there. Uh, by the time she did her finals at Hull, she'd learnt to make use of her stenographer, who uh, took down what she dictated to her during the exams. And apparently the exams were held in a... She was in a separate room to the main exam room, uh, but the other students could hear her dictating to the stenographer, and uh, they always knew when she was thinking, because there would be a long pause. The fruits of Barbara's labour finally paid off when she graduated with a starred first in 1942. She also left the university with many lifelong friends and happy memories. Barbara's ambition to study at Oxford was finally realised thanks to her education and success at the University College Hull. Barbara enrolled at St Hilda's College in Oxford to undertake her postgraduate degree, which she was awarded on the 3rd of March 1945. Interestingly, uh, although I knew she spent the B at Oxford after being at Hull, um, she spoke more about Hull than she ever did about Oxford. After the war ended, Barbara moved to West London, where she began working for the British Council. So we knew Barbara as a neighbour and in Ickenham in West London, but we, I had also known her and respected her for her role at the British Council. Um, I do know she uh, was very well thought of, um, and when she left in 1981, some amazing tributes were made to her. Throughout the rest of her life, Barbara was extremely thankful and always remembered the University of Hull, which gave her the support and belief to reach her full potential. 
Since Barbara's graduation from our institution, the University College began to expand its campus and throughout the 1940s and 50s continued gaining more and more students, with over 1,000 students attending annually by 1956. It was in 1954 that the University gained its Royal Charter, allowing it to become a fully-fledged University. During the 60s and 70s, the University saw a huge expansion to its campus, adding the Bryn Mawr Jones Library, home of legendary poet Philip Larkin, as well as the Wilberforce Building. In the 80s, 90s and noughties, the university continued to grow and thrive, slowly expanding its campus and becoming a place of learning for roughly 15 to 20,000 students a year. A further large investment into campus construction saw the library refurbishment completed in 2015 and the equipment brought into the digital age. Middleton Hall then received a much needed makeover, turning it into a premier arts venue in time for Hull's year as the UK City of Culture. We also built a state-of-the-art accommodation complex on campus in the form of the courtyard and thanks to a generous donation from the Alam family, we were able to build the exciting new home of the university's health faculty in the Alam Medical Building. Unfortunately, in 2012, Barbara began to experience health problems and sadly died on the 21st of October 2015. Barbara's kindness and generosity, which so many of her friends celebrate, was once again recognised by the university, who were the grateful recipients of a significant gift in her will. It's right an exam with a sort of tremor. It would be very, very difficult. But once she had a stenographer, that did, you know, just meant that there, were, there was no barriers anymore. And as, as was rightly said, Hull University gave her that opportunity. And hence the fact that she's made this bequest, because she obviously, sorry, I could get emotional now. She, <laughs> So she obviously really appreciated what Hull did for her. In 2017, the university chose to recognise both Barbara's regular lifetime donations and her inspirational legacy donation by renaming a key building on campus in her honour. As well as funding an annual public lecture in the arts and a project to support students with disabilities, Barbara's donation contributed to both the reconfiguration of student support services and the fantastic refurbishment of what is now known as the Canon Turner Building. I still feel quite amazed to think she had a really robust constitution for most of her life. Condition she was born and the limitations that may have placed on her. Well, I think she'd be, I think she'd be absolutely chuffed. You know, I mean, there's no doubt about that. And she had a huge affection for Hull. So it's truly an honour, but a very well deserved honour. I think Barbara would be incredibly humble and deeply honoured to think that her bequest has, has transformed itself into something which is such a permanent memorial to her. She, she would feel very, very deeply touched.